I have been traveling a lot lately, usually by plane, flying somewhere between five to six hundred miles per hour through the air, which is how I keep this glow of youth. You see, the faster you travel, the slower you age, and no one knows this better than Valiant's XO Manowar. Eric of Dacia was a noble warrior of the Visigoths until he was captured by an alien army known as the Vine. He and the other prisoners were used for labor aboard a massive Vine ship. There, Eric witnesses a strange ceremony involving the powerful man of war armor known as Shanhara. The origin of this armor is a bit beyond our scope for today, but just know that it is incredibly powerful, basically unbeatable, and it has to bond with its host as a sort of symbiotic relationship. If it doesn't deem you worthy, things probably won't work out in your favor. Years go by and Eric staged a riot along with the other slaves to overthrow their vine captors. They headed to the temple where the sacred armor of Shanhar was being kept. Knowing they wouldn't last much longer against the vine forces, Eric took a chance and bonded with the armor. To everyone's surprise, especially the vine, the armor deemed Eric worthy enough to wield the man of war armor's virtually unlimited power. Yet even with the firepower on his side, Eric could not protect the other prisoners. The vine killed them all, leaving only him. If there's a reason he's still alive when so many have died, Eric was not willing to wait for it. He went on a rampage through the ship that quickly led to him being blown out into the vacuum of space. In his unconscious state, he experienced memories of the life he left behind, his people, his wife. He woke up shouting, Rome. Rome, Rome, which prompted the Man of War armor to teleport him back to Earth, back to Rome. But there's a problem. When Eric arrived back home, it wasn't really his home anymore. He's been away for years, 1600 years. It's now 2012 at the time when the comic came out. Eric is a man out of time, but unlike, say, Captain America, Eric wasn't frozen, unconscious to the passing of time. He was active, a slave on a spaceship for what felt like only a few years to him, while 16 centuries passed on Earth. How is that possible? It's due to special relativity, which we're going to talk about in super simple terms today. So all of you physics nerds, bear with me as I overly simplify something that's pretty complicated. But really, you only need to understand two things. Number one, the laws of physics are the same for any non-accelerating frame of reference. If you're traveling in a car or bus or even extraterrestrial spaceship right now going at a constant speed while I'm here, stationary in my chair, and we both drop our phones, the laws of physics acts on them the same way. Simple enough. Doesn't matter how fast you're moving, everything is moving relative to something else anyway. Number two, the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers. And that sounds pretty straightforward, but think about how mind-blowing and completely counterintuitive that is. Let's say you and I are traveling on a plane and you're a couple rows ahead of me. I see that you're reading the newest issue of Archer and Armstrong and I want in on that action. So I ask you to toss it back my way, which you do at let's say five miles per hour. To us on the plane without any other reference, that's exactly how fast we see the comic traveling five miles per hour. But to an observer on the ground, we're already traveling in a plane about 550 miles per hour. So you in the front of the plane throwing a comic back towards me would mean that the person on the ground sees the comic actually traveling at 545 miles per hour. But now let's say I'm trying to get your attention by shining a laser pointer from where I am in the back of the plane to where you are in the front. The laser travels to you at obviously the speed of light, but think about that observer on the ground again. Would they be seeing a laser travel at the speed of light plus 550 miles an hour that the plane is traveling? Mm -hmm. No, you, you can't go 550 miles an hour over the speed of light. The speed of light is constant, at least in a vacuum. So. Retroactively imagine all of those scenarios we just went over, but we also couldn't breathe. I'm making things too complicated, which is why I'm going to make it probably harder. Thanks to special relativity, we get a phenomenon known as time dilation. Getting back to Exo Man of War, the subject of this video, we know that Eric was traveling on a Vine spaceship for years that was capable of incredibly fast speeds around the speed of light. This is important because time dilation means that time actually moves slower the faster you go. So while the Earth progressed 1600 years into the future, at his speeds, Eric only experienced the passing of a handful of years. And to explain why this happens, we're gonna need a clock. Uh, 
a different kind of clock. To the animations! Imagine a clock made up of two mirrors with a pulse of light traveling between them. Every time the light hits a mirror, the clock ticks. Now let's put that clock on the Vine spaceship that's traveling close to the speed of light. Eric is traveling on board and he sees the pulse of light moving straight up and down between the mirrors. Everything looks normal. But now let's get the perspective from you on Earth as the Vine ship travels by. If you've got a keen eye as we slow things down here, you wouldn't see the light pulse moving just up and down, you'd observe it moving diagonally. From your frame of reference, it travels a much greater distance than how Eric observes it. So how do we account for this extra distance? Well, the speed of the light pulse has to be faster in order for it to travel the longer distance in the same amount of time. Except that we know that that's impossible. The speed of light is constant, so it must be that time itself slows down from your perspective. This is a real quirk of physics that we've observed with clocks on space stations and satellites, which can get thrown off whack compared to clocks on Earth due to them experiencing time differently. It's typically only by a few microseconds. The effect gets exponentially stronger as you approach the speed of light, but forget about clocks for a second. Imagine what this means for speedsters like the Flash. The faster he runs, the slower he ages relative to his friends at Star Labs. He could return from a battle and find Cisco as an old man. I'm exaggerating a bit. Plus, I'm sure there's an explanation, like the speed force protects him or something. Or maybe he just needs to run faster. I don't know. <laughs> Seems to solve all of Flash's problems. Just for funsies, I wanted to do the math on this and find out exactly how fast the Vine ship must have been traveling for our hero, Exo Man of War here, to have missed out on 16 centuries. We know that Eric was captured in 402 AD and held prisoner for several years. Unfortunately, the current canon doesn't give us an exact number. Thankfully, my buddy Daniel from Valiant Vlogs tracked down that before the Valiant universe was rebooted in 2012, the classic canon stated that Eric was captured for seven years, and we'll assume the same for the current state of Exo. Eric reappeared in modern day Earth, presumably in 2012 when the comic was printed. This means that from the perspective of Exo Manowar, during the seven years he was captured, the Earth progressed 1,610 years into the future. And with those numbers, we can figure out exactly how fast the Vine ship must have been traveling. If you want to see the full math behind this, we'll link some videos below that explain it in much more detail. But for now, we'll just do the math in our heads real fast. Let's see what that would be. Ah, yes, of course. It's 299,790 kilometers per second or 186,280 miles per second. It's all up here, guys. Now that is some incredible speed. In fact, it's just below the speed of light, over 99.99% there, which for a fictional comic book universe is theoretically possible, as long as we're not exceeding the speed of light, as that would take an infinite amount of energy. And you might think that Valiant cut it a little close with these numbers, but... Not really. Remember, the effects of time dilation get exponentially stronger as you approach the speed of light. Eric could see a million years on Earth go by compared to his seven in captivity and still not exceed the speed of light. So well done, Valiant. The science seems to be on your side here. And unfortunately, that means the sad parts too. You see, no matter how much Eric wants to return to his people, to his wife, time dilation only works in one direction. He can't ever go back. A warrior from the past, with armor from the future, stuck in the present. What do you guys think? Does the science of Exo Man of War check out? Would you travel far into the future knowing you could never return to the past? How many comments about the movie Interstellar do you think I'm gonna get in this video? Let's talk about it right down there. And thanks so much again to Daniel from Valiant Vlogs for helping out with this video. Go check his channel out, guys. Link's gonna be in the description. All sorts of great stuff over there. And if you like these comic book science videos, we've got a whole playlist about them right here, like this one about mind-blowing time travel paradoxes with The Flash. If you're in the mood for more Valiant, check out this video about how super soldiers like Bloodshot might actually exist. There's a bunch of science in that one too. Links are also in the description. And make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the videos we make for you every week that explore the history, science, philosophy, and art behind your favorite comic book superheroes. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.